Hey, what is going on YouTube? In today's video, we are going to cover the machine Shopee on Hack the Box. I enjoy this machine a lot. We do some of the basics. We even get into some reverse engineering, which is something I'm still new to. So with that being said, let's get started. So for the very first step, we are going to perform a port scan. So to do so, we will do the following command. So we have nmap followed by the IP address dash sc for default scripts dash sv for enumerating the various versions found on those open ports and dash oa where we get several formats for this uh, nmap scan once that scan is complete we will see that we have port 22 open for ssh and port 80 open for http and we could also see that it did not follow the redirect of choppy htb or choppy.htb so let's go ahead and add that to our host file so in here is where you're going to add the host so we're going to do specify the ip address followed by the url otherwise we will not be able to view that page before we go ahead and check out that page we're going to just run a um, scan for the various directories hosted on this web page and to do so we'll just use derb So you will use derb and then just followed by the url which make sure you specify the http and without any options or any word list this will use the common word list as you can see here so while this is running in the background let's go ahead and run over to the page and see what we find all right so with this page open we notice that we have a countdown uh there's not much that we could do besides this thing moves around Kind of follows the mouse uh, i don't see any links or anything like that so we're probably going to have to rely on the results that come from the directory scan so let's go ahead and check that out so once that scan has been completed and hit has enumerated the web directories on this web server we will see the results here we have admin a few other standard and then we have the login form so let's go ahead and check out that login form once we open that up, we will notice that we just have a standard web form requesting a username and password. Does not seem to be anything other than just a basic request. So if we come into here and just say admin and password, um, maybe do some defaults, admin, one, two, three, four, admin, admin. Obviously, we're not going to get anything. We also don't get any errors or anything like that. Um, but with that being said, what I usually do try to do is see if this thing is susceptible to like an SQL injection. So if I go in here and type out an apostrophe, for example, it seems to time out uh, after a couple seconds to a few minutes, it'll eventually time out with an error. So that leads me to believe that this is actually susceptible to a SQL injection, meaning that I could get possibly get authentication or bypass authentication using SQL. Essentially that this username is not being uh, validated properly when it's being passed through the back end and it's kind of interpreting that username that i passed through as a actual code uh, thinking it's on the server side so if we go ahead and just paste in this eventually this is where i, I was led down to this is admin closes out and then it's usually this is the an or a logical or operator for whatever reason it doesn't seem to be the case which i'll explain it in a second and then we have a empty string value here equals and then an empty well there's the timeout and then so empty string value here equals and then there's essentially an empty string value here because you're going to assume that this second apostrophe is the beginning so it would look like this and that's kind of what the back end is set up as so this is just the beginning of the uh, apostrophe of that statement and then it's going to close out on the server side so if we pass this through this will obviously well not obviously but this will bypass authentication uh, if we go back just to kind of highlight it here so if we did one and then one so this is saying one equals one this will also allow us to get in the reason why i'm saying that this doesn't seem to be like an or operator is because you would think that if i just pass anything here that this should pass whatever reason it doesn't because you would say that subscribe to me 
or one equals one and one of those statements must be true in order for this to um, authenticate but for whatever reason it doesn't work so we could just go ahead and do one equals one which it does and that is true which is why we get authenticated to this web server under the admin portal once we're in here the only thing that we kind of see available to us is a search for users option up here in the top right if we click in here and let's say we search for admin download export we'll kind of get the it looks like a hash value for the admin user now if we go back let's say maybe this is also able to be injected with sql some various options here that i've tried in the past um, but if we go in and paste this one in again the same thing just to highlight is where i found out this was also starting to time out or actually we got an internal server error so if you go ahead and paste this in there essentially the same thing and we get that value so i just had an error so once you paste that in there and let's try it again okay so now we download this export and we notice that we have two more or we have one more entry which is id of one so this is kind of like an sql database it's pulling from here's the id here's the username and here's a password assuming this is a hash we could use various tools within linux um, but a quick way especially for these captured flag machines or hack the box machines you can go on to crackstation.net and it has a rainbow table essentially allowing us to kind of uh, see if this hash is already available crack that hash and we could see that this equals remember this way so we could automatically assume that the username josh has the password of remember this way and maybe we could use that to get into the various services on this machine after trying those credentials for josh and ssh it did not work uh, the only thing that the next logical step would be since we had no other directories i tried a few other word lists and nothing was relevant or able to be used so the next thing that we could look at is the subdomains so this is the command here go buster v host dash u for the url here's the word list shout out to the setlist word list which you can find on github it has everything you ever need so we go ahead and um we'll execute this and see what subdomains that we find within this web server it may take a little bit just a quick shout out here's the site list that i was talking about by daniel I cannot pronounce that uh, on GitHub. Definitely give it a check. Um, has everything for your SQL injections, passwords, and everything cracking, fuzzing, everything in there. I've used it for years for all my hacked box machines and try hack me and various captured flags that I attempted to go through in the past. So definitely check it out. Definitely worth your while. All right. So once the GoBuster scan has been completed. You notice that it has found mattermost.shopee.htp, so the subdomain mattermost. Let's add that to our host file so we can navigate it and check it out. So the same thing as earlier, you're gonna go ahead and specify the same IP address. And then we are going to add the mattermost. And then we go ahead and save that. Now, if we go ahead and head over to mattermost.shopee.htb, we're going to go ahead and try to log in with the user that we just found, which was Josh. And then the password was remember this way, which was the hash that we had cracked using crackstation.net. Once you log in, for those that are not familiar, Mattermost is a collaboration, kind of like Slack uh, for people to, to collaborate and chat on. If you head over to the channel Deploy Machine, you'll notice that the user mentioned some credentials saying for the deploy machine, you can create an account with these credentials. So with that, we could try to log into SSH on this machine using these credentials found here. There we go. So after we log in using this username, specify the IP address and the password we found on the Mattermost channel, we could get, then go ahead and grab the user.txt. And there we go. This is where it starts to get 
phone. So if we go ahead and run sudo-l to see what sudo permissions this user has, we see that we can use the following commands on choppy so that with the user deploy, we could use password manager. So if we go ahead and specify go ahead and try to uh, execute that program password manager we will ask for a master password which we obviously do not have and it says access denied so what we are going to do next is we are going to try to grab this application to our machine and kind of reverse engineer it to see if we could find anything else that is going on within that app to do that we are going to use scp which is a simple way to transfer a file from the machine to our to our machine so we're going to use scp specify the user followed by the ip address the directory location which was home deploy password manager and then from there this is going to be the location where we want to store it which we have created a directory shopee within our hdb directory and we are going to name it password manager so if we go ahead and execute that we need the password and now we have it on our local machine password manager so what we're going to do here is open up, I do not know how to pronounce it, Hydra or something like that, Hydra, I could probably look that up. In here, we're going to go ahead and create a new project. So doing that, we're going to go to File, New Project, Non-Shared Project. Doesn't matter where we really do this, just for an example. Nope, I'm not going to save. That was just a previous when I was running through this machine. So let's go ahead, open up this project. And then, oh, uh, error is already open. And then here you're going to go to the little dragon up here, which will open up the code browser. And over here, we're going to import the file. And if we head over to the password manager, which is where we put it, actually. For this example, we put it in documents, HCB, Shopee, and password manager. Go ahead and open that up. Leave this all as default. Hit OK. It'll ask it if it has not been analyzed. If you would like to analyze it, let's click yes. Leave it default. And it's pretty quick. So if we go over here on the left side, go under functions. The first thing that we want to take a look at, or the only thing we want to take a look at really in this example, is the main function kind of give us an idea of what's going on possibly. I am not too familiar with um, the code that this is written in or the language that this is written in. I believe it's C++. Uh, but with that being said, some of it is able to be pretty much understood just based on a basic understanding of other languages that I have used in the past. If we scroll down here, we notice that the, from what I see, it is that the local 68 variable it has uh, various string values being assigned to it. And I say that because it says operator plus equals, which usually means it's appending a value. And I'm assuming this is saying the local 68 variable is which, what we are applying it to and the, and the string value that we want to append to it is passed here. And as you can see, it kind of like loops through or goes down. Uh, so we got S A M P L E all be appended to the local underscore 68. And then if we scroll down here, we see a compare function and it looks like it's comparing it to local 48. So I think what's happening is it's comparing local 68 to local 48, which is possibly the user input. Um, but either way, the only thing that we need here is if we pass this through as the password, that should get us in as the master password for the password manager. So once we execute that again, let's go ahead and run password sample I'm not sure if I typed anything there we go sample and as you can see we now have the deploy user cred which is deploy and deploying right here so let's go ahead and copy that and let's do an su for switch user sorry su deploy for switch user um, specify the password now that we have that password over now that we are logged into SU or logged into deploy, the first thing that we kind of want to do is like, who am I? We know we're deploy, let's run ID to see what uh, groups we're assigned to. 
in here we notice that we are assigned to the docker group so that makes me assume that we have docker permissions which usually involves like sudo and stuff like that um so let's go ahead and see what docker images are on this machine and we see we have the alpine the latest so from there there's a doc or an article out there you can just google it um seeing how to escalate your permissions using docker uh so pretty much self-explanatory so what we are going to do is we are essentially going to so if we try to read out the read out the root.txt within the root directory we obviously see permission denied but what's let's say if we had this root directory or this root.txt file inside of the inside of the container if we essentially mounted it to the container there's no one saying that we could not access this since we have those permissions we are the root user within this docker container so if we go ahead and just run the following command so docker run dash it for an interactive session dash v which is a bind mount and we're going to mount the so this is the host machine so we're going to mount the root directory inside of slash mount inside of this docker container so we go ahead and execute that we are now inside of this machine and we are the root user so if we go ahead and cd into mount we could see that we have the root.txt and since we have root permissions now that we are the root user we go ahead and read that out potentially giving us um privilege privilege escalation because now we could essentially mount anything we want to this machine and take a look at it using the root permissions here so that's going to close out today's video I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the hack the box machine shoppy i enjoyed it very much um again it is a basic tutorial i'm just getting into some of these new techniques for instance uh, reverse engineering is not something I'm, I'm very familiar with so doing this was kind of cool and uh, using some past experience getting through this machine uh, was super nice and it felt good to get through this machine so i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions drop it in the comments below if you would like more content similar to this video or anything related to hacking, cybersecurity, information technology, or anything like that, drop a like, subscribe for more, and as always, never stop learning.